So I've been using the term the next economy to wrap up a whole load of concepts around technology and the future of work. You know, we see a lot of concern about technologies like AI, on-demand, robots, and we have this notion that these technologies are going to take away jobs. You know, you hear about, oh my gosh, we're going to wipe out truck driving. And what we haven't created is an affirmative vision of what this technology could do uh, that is today impossible. What is the work that needs doing? Because we tend to think of the economy uh, uh, with too much magical thinking. For me, there's a cluster of principles that we can start to identify that frame what makes a next economy company. So one of them uh, is they enable humans, you know, workers, use technology to enable workers to do things that were previously impossible. I like to use Uber as an example. Right. You know, uh, you could call a cab on the street, you could call a cab by a phone, but we had this latent capability in our smartphones where the passenger and the driver, we know exactly where they are at all times. You know, Uber went, oh wait, we can do this thing that was previously impossible. You can call a cab from anywhere, the driver can find out where you are and come right to you. Magical, you know, we've all been there in the old days, you know, standing on some street corner in New York, waving vainly for a cab when no doubt there were, was an empty cab driving by two blocks away, you know. Here was this new thing. Augmenting the drivers uh, made something new possible. Uh, there's uh, another pattern that you see there, which is uh, the platform pattern. You know, this idea that um, increasingly we see companies not as uh, an organization that, that employs people full time, but it creates affordances, if you like, for, for those people to use the platform to perform you know, quasi-entrepreneurial activity. And uh, so those two things alone are deeply transformative. In a lot of ways, when you look at a platform style business, it is empowering to people to make decisions. And there are a lot of critics who will say, well, an Uber driver isn't really a, an entrepreneur, an Airbnb host isn't really an entrepreneur, and yet they are. They, you know, they're not told when to show up. They, they actually are, you know, and they're encouraged. You have to study uh, what, what are the best times uh, when your income is going to be best. You have to figure out where are the best places to go, and we will provide you know, tools for, to help you understand that. Well, when I think about what the next economy, economy should look like, I think there, there's a tremendous number of opportunities and challenges we're going to need to solve for. And at least to, to me, they come in several forms. The first one of those is that we do need economies that are growing, uh, that have high, grow, high levels of productivity, uh, that also allow people to participate in those economies. And that's the way in which we've been able to drive prosperity over a long period of time. So all of these economies are going to have to address that challenge in this next economy, particularly if the next economy is the next decade or so. We know that historically, and it's a factual thing, that there are two things that have driven growth and prosperity the world over. Technology is one of those, and globalization mm -hmm. is the other. So we now find ourselves in an odd place where I think in the next economy we need to continue to embrace these two drivers of growth and prosperity, mm -hmm. but at the same time fix the adverse effects that they have. You know, growth is good because of two things. One, if you have population growth, you need the economy to grow at least as fast as the population to keep living standards even. Uh, growth is good. Uh, because presumably it increases the wealth of a population if you have more growth, if growth exceeds the rate, but only if that wealth is distributed properly. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think one of the big changes in our economy over the last uh, you know, few decades has, has be, is that it has become much more of an extractive economy in which corporate profits are going up and we have sort of abandoned the kind of idea that the growth is only good if it leads to prosperity for all. It's not good if it leads to prosperity for a very small number of people who then can't afford to spend the money and it just sits on the sidelines. Oh, I, I, absolutely. And in fact, that's, that's, that's one of the challenges that, that if we're creating a list, we're going to add to the list, this idea of how do we 
uh, grow and develop and innovate at the same time, include everybody and have mm -hmm. the benefits of that go to everybody. I think it's quite striking, for example, that you know, the, at a time when, even through periods in the last decade when productivity has been, has been good, uh, the share of the, of the national income that's gone to wages has actually declined. But at the same time, I think the, the, the response should not be, let's throw out the drivers of growth and productivity. I, exactly. It's, yeah. let's, should, let's fix them and make sure that we're getting the benefits and everybody is, is, is enjoying the benefits yeah. of that. And that's what we haven't done as well. So the next economy has to solve for that.